Hey folks, welcome back to the Rupedia world and I am Abhinay Gupta and today again we'll continue with the professional ethics by the Chartered Accountant Act 1949 and in the previous lecture if you remember we had started with the clause number 7 of the part 1 of the first schedule right we have been through the basic text of the clause right we have tried to understand what lies behind we have been to certain points in it and today we take the lecture ahead right so this lecture will be a continuation of those points that we were discussing in the previous lecture okay with it so on the slide you will see all the points in continuation so the next point that we undertake would be that the name should be listed in the directory in alphabetical order now what do you first of all what we need to understand is what is a directory right when we talk about directory the first thing that hits into our brain is the telephone directory yes even that is a case that we need to discuss that if you have a telephone directory of any area right you have a telephone directory where you go you search by the name of the location or the name of the person it's an alphabetical order and you get the phone number that is the landline number of that premise of that house right so even if a chartered accountant gets his name listed in any telephone directory where he is being placed right so if I open up a firm somewhere in South Delhi for example right so in that area that area will have a telephone directory I get through the telephone directory and then I can get to the number of so and so associates chartered accountant firm but you have to be very careful that when you are getting your name inserted in the directory it has to be similar in a similar way like everybody else does that means no bold no specific section uh, no extra description nothing alphabetically arranged wherever your name fits in your name will be there in the same font same uh, font size font type no bold no italics nothing in the similar way similar display as the other names in the list are right there's no particular section the list of all chartered accountants and name goes over there no right your name has to be in the general list in the general order so that is about a telephone directory now is telephone directory the only kind of directory that we have the answer is no right so there are many spe uh, specific bodies right a particular body may have a particular directory for all its members so even if a chartered accountant gets his name registered in that directory of that particular body you have to follow the same norms that means no extravagant inclusions no styling no fonting no uh, highlighting if I say if I use the word no highlighting you cannot highlight your word in the entire directory it's a common directory everybody goes there everybody search right you should not make any attempt right where, where what happens is if anybody opens a directory they get their attention on your name that is a pull technology you're pull, that is the different pull technology over here you're pulling the attention right you cannot do that it has to be general so while the person is going through the name list alphabetically you should come and go across your name as well in the similar order clear with it right but apart from these two there is a third category of directory as well which is a very specific directory as to who is who right now in that directory if you give in then you have to make your discretion in giving out the information for that directory if somebody is maintaining a, an exclusive directory right over there you have the detail of all the chartered accountants all the lawyers around all the doctors around and everything so that that can be virtual that can be an anything right these days so when you are giving information for the directory make sure you are very particular about the information you give given the information your name your address your firm's name your qualification then you can also give in if you intend the number of companies where you have directorships as well and all those kind of things and little more personal details as well can be added these things are allowed right because these are what is basically known to the public but you cannot mention any of the clients you serve or any of the special attainments that you have these kinds of extravagant or beyond the next level step 
should not be taken right so you have to be very careful when you get yourself listed in any category of directory okay so the next one that we have is photograph and brief particular in a magazine without payment is allowed yes so that if we say that you are not supposed to advertise that does not mean that you cannot in any ways right because there are two basic differences always an art on an article or a write up in a magazine does not tend to be an advertisement right understand for example if you have done something good and then somebody appreciates your work in a magazine or some magazine wants to interview you for any particular purpose may it be professional may it be some other thing right so over there if you want to give in your photograph if they want to click your photograph and put it into the magazine you can do that right with a brief particular again over there you will not be demonstrating the entire detail of the clientele you have and the work you provide and everything no you're not doing that but yes what is your firm where where do you put up right what are the kind of services you provide why is that write up being provided in the newspaper all these kinds of stuff can be there with your basic information and your photograph but only if that magazine approaches you for that purpose that sir we want to interview you and want your article in our magazine but if you pay a magazine to come and get your interview and put up an article then you cannot do these things right then you'll have just one liners over there that okay this is this is what it is we want i want to give this information to the general public and there is it there is it you are not soliciting client in that way because that will lead to an advertisement and you will be guilty under clause 6 and clause 7 both understand but you know there are certain kinds of advertisement that are also allowed i'll let you know in the part in this lecture itself will come da come down to that as well so basically what i want to understand is are you people clear with what we have discussed so far if yes we'll move ahead if no please rewind the video or go back to the previous lecture as well if needed understand with clarity and then come at uh, come to this point and let's step ahead right next photograph on the visiting card is not allowed quick response code is allowed now this is one thing you have to understand you as a chartered accountant have a visiting card right that okay this this so and so associates chartered accountants on the top end you have the phone numbers and everything at the top left end you have the institute's logo because you cannot use your logo remember <laughs> i'll keep reminding things huh so you cannot use your logo but you have a logo of the institute that you can use so you use it over there when you write it established by the act of parliament and stuff all those things okay established by the act of parliament icai <laughs> don't write you are a member of parliament right so that that can be done and it's a plain decent looking professional visiting card now if you want to add some of the chartered accountants they go very creative and they say ah, i will add some photographs to this photographs of calculators pens and stuff or my own photograph as a water printing or whatever creativity they do right it is prohibited now why understand the background you people all of you must have seen visiting cards right doctors professionals businessmen every everybody everybody carries a visiting card these days and you must have seen visiting card your father's visiting card your uncle's visiting card your teacher's visiting card your doctor's visiting card if you have been observant right then there are certain things you must have seen that these photographs and other things are basically displayed on the visiting cards of businessmen and most specifically salesmen right they have the photographs of their products on the visiting card or if they are into travel they have some airplanes and stuff drawn on the visiting card is there into some other business of iron steel then they have that at the background right you have seen that your yeah, business people basically they carry these kinds of visiting cards where they demonstrate or put an impact on the mind of the viewer via the photograph so what are they trying to do they are basically trying to pass on an information that this is my product if you want come to me that means they are soliciting clients so for solicitation of client that is a tool that they use right so now if the chartered accountant is using the same tool what do you think is he doing yes 
he is using that tool of solicitation that means he is soliciting client via that hence that is not allowed so forget about clause number 7 that is first of all ban in clause number 6 because solicitation is not allowed right but why do we cover it in the clause 7 is because over here it is not just about solicitation but it is very specific about the advertisement so whosoever gets your card you advertise that I am a chartered accountant look we have some files and calculators printed over there we do the auditing work come back to us got it that is the kind of imagery you create in the mind of the viewer of your card and you are not supposed to do that definitely not okay so many students I also see have confusion so okay I have this situation in front of me but I don't understand whether is it into class 7 advertisement or class 6 so one thing if you are ever confused in the examination it's safer to mention both the clause and give your reasons where you think which clause is applicable otherwise if you are very particular that yeah it is solicitation but not advertisement at any point of time then write solicitation clause 6 solicit client if you think that there is any mode of advertisement you are well to do with clause 7 only but it is again safer to mention that yeah it is also a part he's also deemed to be guilty as per clause 6 because via this he's trying to solicit clients right so that is on your judgment as to how you want to go ahead with the answer depending upon each specific case right so it is not that very easy you have to understand things to relate to it and understand okay quick response code is allowed how many of you have heard about this word quick response code very few of you very few of you must have heard about the quick response code but if I say this is the QR code a lot of hands would go up yes sir we have heard about it nobody actually thought what QR stands for QR stands for quick response right so on your visiting card if you want a QR code that is allowed if you're using any old book any teachers any author please be careful even if it's not mentioned over there because the Institute and in its latest study material has given this update that QR code is allowed right because we are moving with the generation and QR code is the simplest way to lead to your website if you have a QR code that those are the blocks right if you have seen small small blocks they form a pattern now that pattern when it is used or when it is scanned by a QR scanner maybe in your mo mobile phone these days right you scan the QR code and you are directly directed to some URL which is that QR which that QR code is linked to so every specific QR code that you generate has some message behind right it is an encoding kind of a thing which leads to a URL that means your the website of your auditor of that means it leads to your website so you can get a QR code generated for your website and get it printed on your visiting card that is the latest amendment the institute has given the QR code is now allowed on your visiting cards so as soon as you qualify get those QR codes on your visiting card and you stand out as a unique visiting card because generally people don't use it I don't know how many visiting cards have you seen with QR codes on them right but you should okay that is one update and I hope some of you must be excited that yes the day I qualify I get the membership number and stuff I will get a card of myself after preparing my website with that QR code okay. so be a little smart when you are looking at things whenever you come across QR code try to understand what QR stands for it is a quick response code right moving on next now what are the allowed form of advertisements there are certain actually three types of advertisement which is allowed by the Institute because in those type of advertisement you are not actually advertising your attainments you are not trying to get clients you are advertising it for some other purpose and that purpose is to get either staff accountants to get some employees to get some work done for your clients and stuff so those kinds of advertisements are always allowed when we say advertisement is prohibited we mean you cannot advertise yourself to get clients you cannot advertise yourself in the for the purpose of soliciting clients that is the basic criteria behind 
right so understand that small difference right and then take judicious action on it okay with it now let us see what are the kinds of advertisement that we are talking uh, talking about so number 1 is recruiting staff so if you make an advertisement why because you want a staff so you give out an advertisement that you are so and so chartered accountant firm based out of this place office address this ca this contact number this is looking for a staff so anybody wanting to apply can please do that you're looking for a staff accountant you're looking for any employee over there you can give that kind of an advertisement but you cannot give an advertisement looking out for clients right now moving ahead the second type of advertisement that is allowed for you on behalf of client for staff or property disposal yes if your client wants you to go ahead with advertisement in a newspaper that yeah they are also looking out for some staff so you can go ahead by advertising for your client that my client you don't say my client right that you say that yes yeah, so and so person this office this place they need this staff or these are the properties they are looking out for disposal any any buyer in the market could please contact this is this number so you you can just give it by those mere statements right but yeah even if, when you go out for disposal of some property or something you can also give an image of that property but when you are going for staff do please do not provide your photograph in the newspaper but yeah i am this is me right i am looking for a staff please huh if you feel you can work with me look at my face please come don't do that that's all crap right the third form is advertisement in capacity of a trustee liquidator and receiver now over here you are not a chartered accountant as an auditor or something you are a trustee you are a liquidator you are a receiver now in the capacity of a liquidator if you want to dispose of some property of your client you can do that you can advertise for it if you are a receiver you can do that like liquidator is for a company right receiver is for an individual you know all this if you are a trustee for something you can do that so in that capacity because it is necessary for you to do that in order to get your work done otherwise how will the public in general know that you are disposing of something you cannot go to different ca then say hey if some one of you you know somebody who wants to buy this please let me know we are in an urgency to distribute he will not know roll out or an adverse advertisement in the newspaper whosoever is interested will turn back that's it right so in those situation the institute has clearly said that yeah you can go ahead with it we don't have a problem with that no problem at all right understand because the entire intent for this advertisement is different it is it talks on a different platform a different parameter altogether so these are the types of questions that you can be asked in your examination so and so was a chartered accountant he was a liquidator for this this firm and in order to dispose of his property he went on with advertisement of the thing into the newspaper and blah 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 please decide as per the professional ethics ca act and the schedules is the action taken by the ca correct and when you see the word advertisement yeah he advertised you bang on as per clause 7 part 1 and schedule 2 advertisement is not allowed so this is wrong and you get a zero over there why because you did not read it carefully he was in the capacity of a liquidator and he can dispose of the property right so these specific things that are given have to be seen very very specifically i don't know whether the authors they have this topics in their book right but you have to be careful with these things these are small small things from where the institute picks up the question and then after preparing the entire professional ethics brilliantly our brain goes for a toss boss what is this the paper was out of syllabus it was not it was out of the syllabus that you prepared it is not out of the syllabus that the institute has provided right stick to what the institute says be updated on its portal whatever amendments whatever updates the institute gives as a student icai website I, i i don't say you should open it more frequent than your facebook no but at least once a week open and see what are the new updates over there i'm not asking you to read all the not all the articles over there at least the headlines to know if there is something useful for you nobody will come and spoon feed you feed you right 
before the examination maybe there's a chapter you are preparing die hard and institute says that we are trying not to put forward questions on this chapter because there are such certain situations or in change in the economy and recently we are trying to revise it so this time this will not be important but this thing will be important and we don't give a damn to it and we go on preparing it wholeheartedly and we say oh, we did not get a question from that because you did not go back and see that the institute has already informed you frankly how many of you do open the institute website icai.gov.in very few very few when you do is to check the result is to fill the examination form check out this uh, vacancy for your gmcs or to download the study material at times the podcast to listen to them that is it the journals they come to our place they lie down i'm not blaming you i'm same in the league but what i want to convey is that we should be updated it is for your own good right right so before concluding this lecture i would say that the three advertisement that we are talking about allowed right you have some constraints over there that yeah you can just give out your name your address you can use the word the designation chartered accountant don't be confused specific point i'm dictating while you are advertising for these three specific things right you can use your designation chartered accountant in that advertisement all you need to take care is that advertisement should be as simple as it can be for communicating the message that you want to for these three specific conditions if you go on to give on anything extra that would lead to solicitation of client then you would be deemed to be guilty of professional misconduct right so you can give away your name your address your designation chartered accountant any of such basic information that you want to give right but nothing to solicit client okay with it that was a little little topic that hit the brain right now i think we are good to conclude this lecture but i would want to talk for 5 more minutes now when we are talking about advertisement for recruiting staff right you have to be careful i have given you a general thing that yeah you should not do anything that leads to solicitation but if we take some examples for that right so what you say that we are looking for a staff for a very reputed ca firm this 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 please very reputed word is not required a well known firm that is not required right so you are not supposed to give in these kinds of statements these kinds of word that becomes promotional in nature right no way you have to put in any word that shows that your services are superior to the services provided by any other chartered accountant in the industry the simple message should go that yeah like everybody else even i am a ca firm and i need some article clerk or some staff anybody interested contact me on this this is the address of the office please walk in with your resume that is it don't go on to good or praise your firm right that is something to be looked out for so that is an example that i have given right superior firm very old firm established firm these kinds of word please avoid because that will lead to advertisement now one more very common example that you as students you would relate most of you when you must have qualified your ipcc or you must have seen when people qualify their final there is an advertisement in the local newspaper so and so son of or daughter of so and so has qualified the ca final examination and we heart, the entire family wants to heartily congratulate this for scoring this this marks in this this subjects right she is the chartered accountant now or he is a chartered accountant now and they have been working from this this firm and the firm has supported them a lot the firm has taught them the values the firm has given them the brief knowledge good time to go for the vacation for the study leave and stuff don't you think there's a problem with their advertisement okay you want to praise your son you want to praise your daughter you want to show your love and affection by giving an advertisement in the newspaper do it but please do it not with an intention for undesirable publicity of that ca firm publicize your student your son your daughter we are okay with it do not publicize the principal right some people use that medium 
that they were working with this, this CA, that CA gave them very much knowledge, helped, supported them a lot for their examination, gave them good vacation or holiday before the examination for preparation, was always in touch, very supportive, very cooperative and stuff. Please huh, avoid all such kinds of things. That is not required. Okay, that is again another thing. So I'm just giving you some examples for that, right? But that does not mean that you won't even give the name that she was here. Yeah, you can give the name. Don't use undue advantage. The details that you can give over there is that, yeah, this was my son with this roll number uh, from working in this firm. This is the marks obtained. This is the prize they have received. This belong to this area, this school, this background and stuff. All those things you can give in over there. But for the candidate, not for the principal. Just the name of the principal. Working with so-and-so firm. That is it. Clear? So make sure, right? In near future, this is not just to qualify your examination. You can be caught. Right? You can be guilty in future. So you have to be very careful with these things. And if you see something around, please go and educate them. That sir, I have recently studied this in my professional ethics. This is not a professional ethics of a chartered accountant. Please stop it. If they are doing anything such. Okay? You'll do that? Do that. Because you are the people who can build and can break the reputation of the entire profession. So whatever wrong you see, because that will impact the profession, that will impact the image of the profession. And you are going to be professional chartered accountants in future. Secure it right now. Okay? So I'll see you guys back in the next lecture. And we'll continue this topic further. Until then, this is Abhinay Gupta signing off. Thank you and... Thank you.